Hey everyone, what's up? DJ Sturf here. And I have two silver parsnips in my inventory. I'm going to do a comparison here. I'm going to start at midnight, which is zero hours. Um, I'm going to plant this over here. Plant one over here, right when it hits midnight. And I'm going to let this one grow naturally. This one over here, though, I'm going to do remove crops. So, let's see how long it takes for each one to grow. And you notice these are tiny crops, both fields, because I just planted them. So when you plant something for the first time, you get this scenario in which it starts as tiny crops. So we're going to compare the two fields, and I have a counter here. On the right side here, in OBS, which is what I use, uh, my current settings I'm using... Hold up. Let me check. I am using for output. I'm using advanced mode and recording. I actually uh, lowered the bitrate to 45,000. Um, and I have the ultra fast uh, CPU, pre, uh, CPU usage preset. So it makes big files, but it doesn't take like any CPU for me to do that. It's sitting here at 15.7%, 60 frames a second, 4K60. So um, this is with an i7-6950X, but um, yeah, pretty cool. They did a really nice job with the design of the game. I wish there were a way to hide the HUD. That would be really cool, but the whole active skybox thing is, is a good improvement. Really nice. Some expectations for this. I'm expecting that the first crop will grow in about 4 hours and 25 to 4 hours and 40 minutes. Um, but we'll see. See the stems are spinning here, so that's the growth animation. But you also see them plump up and grow really big. And they'll start to grow at about... Mm, like 4.15 a.m., since I planted them at midnight. And you'll see the exact same growth over here. So, I mean, there's a tiny bit of random variation, but not much. And you're not going to want to do a remove crops until really all the ones you want have started to plump. And that's a good time to do that, to remove crops. Then you get a full crop. And, of course, over here, you're going to get 15 every time that you get a harvest. And over here, you're only going to get 15 minus 1 at best, because you're going to replant one instantly. So you let them grow, you hit remove crops, which costs you $10, a whopping 10 new bucks. Not actually $10, that's more of the cost of Slime Rancher. Well, what did I get? I got this in the, uh, I got this in a, a bundle. That was, yeah, that was a good purchase. That was a good purchase, that bundle. This has been a really fun game. It's one of the few games I would say has a higher price tag for an indie game, but is definitely worth it. Um, they did a really nice job with this game all around, so, um, yeah. And they keep adding stuff to it. I mean, it's, yeah, they're doing a really nice job with it. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see about the uh, the new updates and all that, but I'm, I'm looking forward to them. Like the Iron Rancher mode and all that. And the, uh, like the... With the Quicksilver slimes and all that. Seems pretty cool. And this over here... I know my slimes are not going to be too happy on the other parts of the range. Or ranch, I should say. Not range, but... Um, I backed up my saves for this purpose. Alright, you see them starting to plump here. That's pretty quick, actually. It's over here. So let's actually let's grab these. It is growing, growing pretty quickly. And over here it's the same thing. Actually even more. That's plus or minus on that one. It's not much different. Roostro. Where are you going to see this one go? Alright, I'm going to do 430. Okay, so there, and we're going to pick one and replant. 
And then let's grab the rest of these, and I'll let these ones just naturally grow. 15. Here you go. So 15 from this field. <coughs> and over here... <coughs> should be 14. Because I just used one to replant. Yeah, 14. Okay, so uh, let me update the stats really quick on his counter. Yeah, I'm doing it manually. <laughs> Total number of harvest, 1. 15. Last harvest, 4.30 a.m. Let's just do uh, the game time, so 4.30. One harvest. Total number of crops, 14. Okay. So now you're going to see a big difference. I guarantee. And we'll see a big variation. Y'all can just chill in that cave over there. And uh, let me get some hens for you. Uh, I need more hens over here, really. Okay, so I'm expecting it about 9 a.m. Whoa, you see that instant change there at 6 a.m. Also, I think the music changed. Yeah, it did. Huh, I have never seen that before. That's kind of funny. Like, instant transition. So, at about 9 a.m., I'm expecting I will have crops. You notice here, though, these are tiny crops. But over here, everything's just still under the soil. So I mean, if you are if you're getting crops with the remove crop strategy, you may as well just check back. Oh, what in the world is going on with the tabbies? What? Look at that! What? That's how they get out. What? I was wondering. Wow, that was crazy. That glitched though. What in the world? All right. Um, check back every five hours ish if you're doing a five day. A uh, five-day rush. Part of this is to test the strategy here that I was using because I was removing crops and replanting one instantly and I was getting a ton of crops. Um, I'm very sure that is a good strategy but everyone's commenting on the video saying oh your strategy is flawed this that and the other and especially this oh you know, yeah if you remove crops you're wasting 220 bucks but you'll see that multiplication in this case is a lot better than addition um, <laughs> or ultra fast growth of the same crops is better than the slow normal growth of the natural crops I guess but I mean it's not as if these are like on steroids or have a disadvantage it's just replanting gives you an advantage so anyway we'll find out exactly what the deal is here soon and in another, another probably 45 seconds they'll be Starting to plump up here. It's about 8:45 a.m. I should probably be over here because <clears throat> the other ones aren't going to grow nearly as quickly. You see, they're starting already. 8:20. So probably about 8:40. Actually, I'll be able to start pulling these. You just want to make sure that all of these have started to plump, otherwise they're just probably not going to pop out at all. Just the only ones that are plump. <clears throat> well, let's wait a little bit longer, I guess. I was expecting to do this at 9 o'clock. <clears throat> there, a few more. One. All right, I'm going to hit it at 9 o'clock. I see a few aren't plump already, but let's see if I get those or not. I may or may not. All right, replanted. You know, I probably should have cleared my inventory before I just did that. Um, I think I only got 13 that time, though. Is that... Did I miss any? So yeah, I guess wait until they all plump. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh no, there it is. No, 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 no. That's ah, uh, this might be collateral damage, cat lateral damage from from this right here. Um, we're just gonna say it's we're just gonna say it's 13. Let's give it no benefit of the doubt on this. We're gonna say 27. It may be 28, but I don't know that that's actually. How, whoa! Thought I saw another glitch. That was crazy with the cats glitching over there, though. But anyway, I hope this helps out with your five-day rush strategies and all that, and that you can demolish those accomplishments, achievements. Um, yeah, because you only have to get 50,000 for the max achievement on this this game for Five Day Rush. And what I got was five times that plus a little bit. Um, yeah, it's not that hard to get uh, 50,000. Okay. So, next I'm expecting to see is these may turn into baby crops right after I draw these. But we'll see. Um, but, let's see, it would be 1330 would be the next approximate harvest. And 1340 if you, uh, if you want to wait a little longer. Like every four hours, 40 minutes is probably safe. But sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's not. Still 13 is fine. I mean, that's a that's an okay harvest. As you replant one, one didn't exactly grow all the way. So what did you like best about these updates? You know, this field used to only uh, it, it used used to only be able to grow a certain number of crops before the crops would disappear. And that's kind of Realistic. I mean, you can't have infinite seeds that grow infinite things, but um, or infinite crops or whatever. But uh, in this case, this field is infinite, so it doesn't lose the crops if it's already growing. That was an update in 1.0, Slime Ranch 1.0. Uh, before there would be an even greater advantage to remove crops because at some points, if you didn't tend to your field at exactly the right times and you were just letting it naturally grow, you'd have a field with nothing on it and it wouldn't be growing anything, so none of the growth process would be taking place. You know, you want to get some things rolling so that by the time you want to harvest, you can harvest. So that's the, uh, the big drawback of 0.6. Uh, there is a rooster over there. See, it's starting to plump already. This is going quickly. Let me uh, let me pull this rooster down really quick. There we go. He looked pretty unhappy. Infinitely flying there. Okay, so the expectation 1330. These aren't even out of the soil yet. 13, 20. 13, 30. Moving crops. I bet I got like 12 or 13 that time. We'll see though. There's one over there. I see it. Oh, that's a full 14. Okay, and that one's growing. Give these to the cats. <laughs> the big pink cats. <laughs> they somehow glitched through the wall like crazy. Oh man, that... I was wondering how some of these Largos get out. That's probably what they're doing. They're just glitching like that. Jumping too much, I guess. Alright, let's update the stats. And you remember the first first harvest on each, those are both fresh plants, so um, it's not quite one to one, you know. 
but instead you have two two growth patterns that go up let's see if I if I go like this y'all see it the other way here so it goes up like this but then the rate at which the removed crops fuel goes is the same thing but at that point the um, the other other one let's see this way will tail off and go like this so the further you go along the farther it is apart <laughs> Why do I have this mirrored anyway? I shouldn't have this mirrored. Maybe I should. I don't know. You can read like words on a shirt and that type of thing, I guess. Um, next one I'm expecting is about 18, 18 hours to so 6 p.m. And uh, this one over here, I'm just not sure when I'm going to see the crop. Oh, hey, there we go. It's starting, starting to grow. It just took that long to get to the stage at which this one is. So the tiny crops are here. And they're there as well, but they've been there. So maybe around the same time. No. No. It'll be staggered by a little bit, I bet. This will probably come first. So at about 6 p.m. I'm going to draw those. Harvest those, remove those crops. But I will be keeping an eye on this as well. So essentially, after that first run, this one grew three times. Well, this one is going to grow three times before this one grows once. But that first one, of course... Oh, hello. Hey, cutie. What's up? What? 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 How did you do that? What? Oh, uh, what? How did you do that? How did you do that? You just jumped through the wall. Oh, my tabbies would have escaped. Oh, man. I don't understand. How did you do that? Oh, man. Tabby glitches 101. Whoa. Alright, at about 17, 15, I'll probably start to see some of this grow. And I think you not being with the field also affects its growth rate. Um, I don't know if the distance you're from it also affects it or not. Oh, these are already growing. These aren't yet. Like these are plumping already. You have five, six done, seven, eight. They're kind of sly in how they they grow and plump and all that. Fifteen minutes here. These haven't started to plump yet. But these, though, these are done. Um, Alright, we're going to go a few minutes early. I'm pretty sure that's a harvest of 14. Oh, really? Really? Oh, I should have let it grow those extra few minutes. Is there no more? No! Alright, that's another 13. Yeah, I probably should have waited the, the extra few minutes there. The 13th is still a good harvest. I'm expecting over here this, these will grow next. Man, really? Alright, yeah, that's another 13. Oh, is that over? Nope, okay. Rooster, oh, you gotta go chill over there, buddy. All right, let me update the stats, and I'll keep an eye on this. I'll probably plump here very soon. I think that is accurate. So I'm expecting, oh, there we go, it's starting. Once this finishes, I will 
stop the clock on this. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, one more. Fifteen, there we go. Okay, so 1940, 1939. Alright, update it. That's about 15 hours. Because the first one was at 4, 4.30. This one was at 1939 when I got all the all the crops. Man. You better enjoy parsnips. <laughs> Roostro, what are you doing? Roostro. You know, I've always had a chicken invasion problem. <laughs> I did some trades early on in this entire run. <clears throat> And I got a ton of chickens. I got a ton of roosters and a ton of hens. And I've always had a problem with overcrowding. I don't even use coops anymore. Like coops, I think are useless because it eats up a plot. Plus, you just throw them in an area, and they're gonna they're gonna multiply. <laughs> they reproduce. But um, yeah. So over here, like if I pulled a bunch of hens from the overgrowth, just dumped them all over here with a bunch of roosters. You're going to come back in another 15 days and population may have doubled. I mean, it's just a huge difference. So that's probably the best way to farm. I mean, the overgrowth is a great place for that. And you can free range your slimes there. Or you can just have a tangle slime that grabs chickens whenever, uh, whenever it feels like. But I don't know that... Um, I don't know that there's uh, a use for a coop. I mean, you could put them in a you could put them in a kennel if you wanted. Put them in a kennel with a uh, vegetarian slime, and they'll just chill there and probably multiply just as fast as in a coop. Uh, maybe that's worth testing as well. See if there's an advantage to a coop at all. Because when they're when you have more than twelve in a coop, they just stop multiplying at all. So it's like, it's a way to limit the population. But you see here, like, there's, I mean, there's a chickadee right here. Stony chick. And there's no coop. Uh, this is already ready? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it's about time. Uh, 22, 26. That's when I'll expect to pull stuff. These are still in the soil. Uh, that's going to be too soon. No, no, actually not. Uh, 2227. It's four and a half plus, that's four, that's 31 minutes. Let's see if that's a full 14. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, I got it. Oh no, it's 14. Ah, oh, where did I miscount? I guess I just, uh, whatever. That's another 14. <laughs> That's growing here. Um, let's update it. Two twenty-seven, five harvests with sixty-eight. I'm gonna get a seventh harvest before I get a third harvest on on this one. That's crazy. That really is crazy. A huge advantage. There you go. I know you're not hungry, but you get parsnips. At least you get to play with those. I really like the tabby animation when he like, like gets down and then jumps at you. It's really cute. They kind of can't over here, but if I can pull one out, I'll probably do it. Yeah, look at him. Oh, he just jumped over me. Whoa. Hyper. I'm expecting... Whoa, how did you do that? How did you do that? Where did you get that from? What? How did you do that? Thanks. Here. Oh. Aww. 
He just grabs stuff through walls. What the heck? All right. So I'm expecting at about 3 a.m. Like three, uh, 2.57, I'll be pulling this. It's about every four and a half hours or thereabouts. I'll have to count these legitimately this time. Like my gold dispensers here from all the vaults and all that. I have more in the overgrowth as well, and I put a bunch in the lab, so I think I have about 140-ish in the lab. Um, gold plorts, so in case I need to do anything with gold. Um, apparently, if you keep finding Gilded Ginger and plant the uh, the Master Gordo Snare, or whatever the top one is or whatever, um, you can keep getting Gold Gordos, and when you feed them another Gilded Ginger, which it takes forever to find, that's the least favorite part of the game for me right now is finding the Gilded Ginger because it's, it grows once per day in a random location in the Glass Desert. I wish we had like a list of spawn locations, which would be great and something reliable because every time I go, it's just, it's somewhere different and anytime I look at lists online, it's always different locations, so there have got to be a ton of spawn points for that. But anyway, if you feed another Gilded Ginger over to a Gold Gordo, it explodes and you get uh, what, 10 gold uh, gold slimes that pop out. Then you just like, I mean, if you shoot more Gilded Ginger at them, you get more plorts than usual, but just have the uh, gold sure shot item. And uh, yeah, they should be good. You get three per hit and you should be able to get 30 gold from that. So that's kind of cool, but it takes a lot of searching. In the next few minutes, I'll get there we get starting to plump. So again, 257. I'm expecting to start to pull that. Now these are going a little more slowly. So it seems. Maybe I'm just watching too much. Watching paint dry here. Ah, there we go. It seems like 45 minutes after they start to, one starts to grow, that they all all end up growing. Oops. Ah, oh, missed it by a minute. Let's see. All right, are there 14 left? Four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, another 14. So let's update the counter again. Eighty-two, and let's update this as well. Ah, here. <laughs> there. I'm gonna wait a while on these. Oh no! What? I hope that was in the background. I didn't exactly see that. How in the world did he get up there? What? Alright, I, I actually do need to put them back in the pen so they don't eat the parsnips from the fields. Um, wow, what are y'all doing? Yeah, you are really cute, but... Oh, there's some gold. Alright. So I'm expecting over here... Um... 728. Of course, I'm over here too. That's not an extra one. Yeah, I hope that was on the actual video. I didn't see what happened, but I'm pretty sure they glitched somehow and flew up there. Like, how did the tabby get up in the rafters? One will never know. All right. And just about eight o'clock. So I'm gonna be looking for this next next round. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, about 7:30. Yeah, so it's 7 728 is when I should plan to pull this. It's about every four and a half hours. All 
One interesting thing to find out as well is how teleporting would affect the growth of the crops as well as how about the distance you are from the actual area. I bet it'll grow slower. Because, for example, if I go on a long journey and I have my feeders set to high, or even like normal, I come back and there's still like a hundred or like close, um, like the Oka Oka in the caves. There will be a ton left, and almost like none have been dispensed. And when I when I get back and look at it, the dispenser starts to spit out like boom, 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 and it just goes all the way down. Um, I don't know why it's not periodically done, or whether it's just simulated in game, and then you know you get the uh, results of that with the uh, the feeders, you know. So it's not like a periodic thing where they're eating over time, but if you're in the area, they'll likely continue to eat. But if you're not, if you're on adventure, if you're out away from the ranch, if you're on the range, or in the glass desert or anywhere else, it seems that they're not fed at all, but when you get back, it's just the feeders like, yay, eat a lot, and they're not really, they're not mad. So it's kind of odd. About 643, you should start see, seeing these plump. So another two seconds or so, you'll probably see... Yep, there we go. So another 45 minutes in-game, you should see these grow. And are these... These are still in the soil. Good grief, man. Alright, so I'll get this harvest and then we will tally stuff. Still in the soil. Alright, Stony Hinge. Go back to Stone Hinge. Uh, these all grown? It looks like they're all grown. Yep. Alright, 726. We're moving the crops. We're moving one, we're planting that one, and we're gonna pull all these, which is another harvest of 14. So let's tally everything, alright? Um, 96. Uh, 7.35 a.m. Okay. Alright, so let's do some math. And let me pull up this there we go. Okay, so going through all of this, what we saw... Are the cats pretty well... Yeah, that's... Let me set this a little better. There, there you go. Cat vision. <laughs> Alright, so, um... Let's see, after the first harvest... Because they were even after the first harvest... Um, you essentially have the speed at which the crops grow, so we'll just say it's V for velocity, times the number of crops that you grow minus the number you miss because it doesn't grow a full crop or you have to replant one. That's the number of crops. So we'll just say that's the number of crops that's going to be C. Alright, so V times X minus M is equal to C. Alright, so field one, it was growing every 15 hours and at about see over here. Actually, let me let me pause this because I don't want people saying, well, another one grew and then you get to factor that in because that doesn't give the other harvest the three for for one type of type of thing because you already know it's going to grow again at essentially three and a third times the rate, but we'll, we'll figure this out exactly. Um, okay, so <laughs> field one, um, the velocity at which it grew, it had a harvest every 15 hours. So let's just say it's 24 over 15. That's how many uh, harvests per day that you get, which that turns out to be 1.6. All right, times X, which uh, that's the number of crops. Here it's 15. Minus M, you don't miss anything. So you essentially get 1.6 uh, X. Uh, field two, and uh, you have a growth every uh, 4.5 hours, so every four and a half hours it would grow a crop, uh, grow a full crop, or very close. Um, 
and you would multiply that by x minus, we'll just say 2 because sometimes I was getting 13. Um, if you want to be really precise, I guess you'd say x minus 1 and 2 sevenths because it only happened on two of those. Um, but we'll just say 2, worst of all worlds. Which that would be, um, that's 5.33, that's 5.3 repeating. So 5.3 x minus uh, 10.67 essentially, so 10.6 repeating, um, 10.67. I guess that would turn out to be 48 over 9, or 48 over 4.5 rather, um, which is, yeah, 10.67 approximately. Uh, so, um, at a certain, like before it hits 3, you get an advantage from field 2, and we're talking about x being the number of crops at x is greater than or equal to 3, uh, field 2 wins by a lot, <laughs> but X can be only 15 or 20. X can only be <laughs> 15 or 20, because you get 15 parsnips, but you might get 20 pogo fruit. And you're gonna see a tiny bit better proportionality in crop totals with pogo fruit, because one out of 20 being sacrificed is less of a proportion than one out of 15. But, um, or you know, getting 18 out of 20 by missing another one is, is better than getting 13 out of 15. So it has more of an advantage in that case, but not by much. Uh, it's going to be, you know, about the same proportion. Um, if you if you compare the two, so 5.33x over 1.6, you could convert this out to um, if uh, field one is just x, field two would be, um, let's see, 5.33 divided by 1.6. 5.3 repeating, 1.6 is 3.33. Minus, uh, that's kind of negligible at this point. Um, it, it'd still be the same there. Yeah, there. That's the proportion as you multiply it by 2. Um, yeah. So the crops grow 3 and a third times faster in field 2 with a remove crop strategy than field 1 which gives it a very distinct advantage. And that's one reason I use that strategy is you get a whole lot more crops and you have to sacrifice one. And I keep getting comments on that 251,000 plort uh, five day rush or whatever, the over 250K one that I did. And that was my third run ever. Uh, but figuring out all of these things, people were saying, oh, it's, your strategy's flawed because you keep losing $210, $220 new bucks uh, by replanting that uh, whatever crop that you have. Um, so I'd rather sacrifice that for a whole lot more crops and then I feed more crops to my slimes and get more plorts. Sometimes uh, less for more investment strategy is better. And in this case, this is multiplicative versus essentially additive, um, or I should say it's greater multiplication than the other field. So. Um, you can grow it naturally and you'd still get a bunch of crops, but you're going to get crops a whole lot more efficiently and faster than um, than just naturally growing if you do remove crops. Um, I hope that made sense. I kind of twisted my uh, my brain in thinking about what I was trying to say there. Um, <laughs> yeah, remove crops is a good strategy. That's pretty much it. Uh, also, this 1.0 update gave an advantage to a naturally growing field because there's no time at which the naturally growing field will not have a crop. It used to be that it ran out and you couldn't infinitely plant uh, the same crop or whatever just by planting it once, but now you can. So that's an advantage there. But um, when, when you get the crops, just check every like five hours or thereabouts and, and you should be good. I mean, if you can do that every four and a half hours. I think there's also an effect of you not being in an area uh, where things will grow less quickly if you're not in the area. Another good thing to check would be whether or not the presence of you affects the speed at which crops are grown. Because if I go on an adventure and I check the feeder in the, the grotto where all my crystal rads are, it's usually all the way up still. And then when I'm present, it just like feed, 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 and just time and time again, and it just slurps out all these oka oka for the slimes and they all eat but 
it doesn't seem that it's actually doing that during the day, like the entire day when I'm gone. Um, so I think you being there also affects that, but I'm not sure in terms of crop growth. So that's one thing that's also worth checking out. But in this case, I just wanted to see all things considered in terms of growing and sitting there watching things grow and all that. Yeah, the removed crops was growing every four and a half hours and the natural was growing every 15. So replant is faster than naturally growing and like natural reset, I should say. Um, that's about it. Um, maybe I should call that one natural reset. Let's change that. Natural reset. There we go. Hey, that makes more sense. All right, well, I'm gonna piece that together and hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, hope this helps you in your strategy and feel free to give me a shout out if the strategy helped you. I will check you next time. Peace, God bless you, have a great day and yeah, till next slime ranching. You know, <laughs> I need to clean out these pens like crazy. All right, these still these still haven't grown. All right. <laughs> All right, see ya.